While Yume Nikki is just an indie game to most people, this game made a massive impact on the internet. It laid down the foundation of the RPG Maker horror community. It created subcultures influencing tons and tons of people. It was an oddity at launch being made an RPG Maker while not at all being an RPG. At the time, something like that was unheard of. Its aimless gameplay and absolutely surreal characters left an impression that would last a century. There really isn't anything else like it. Or rather, there wasn't anything else like it, now there's tons of games like it. From the newfound pixel horror community spawned countless fan-made sequels, and I really stress the definition of the word countless. As in, I cannot count them all. There's the big ones, Dot Flow and Yume Tuki. But then there's so many more. This isn't even half of them. Seriously, that is seven pages of 13. And that's just the ones recorded on the fan games wiki. Something around 200 games. And there could be even more unaccounted for. I've already talked about Dot Flow, so why don't we take a look at some of the other Yume Nikki fan games today. Of course, I won't be able to talk about all of them, or even anywhere near all of them, but we can at least take a look at three of them today. That's Lucid Dream with some of the letters missing. This one was developed by a Japanese composer going by the username Karanba. This individual also contributed to the development of Yume Tuki, credited as N3. Like Yume Niki, you start off in a bedroom. A very small bedroom at that. You've got the Yume Niki staples already. A bed to access the dream world, a computer to save your game, a balcony, and a game console. Which crashed my game when I tried to play it. Probably something to do with locale settings. I didn't bother trying to get it to work. I'll probably live without knowing what the minigame is like. I gotta say, I honestly find the character design a tad lackluster. Chie, the character in question, just seems like a, a regular girl. There's nothing really memorable about her to me, like Matasuki's pigtails and pink windowed sweater, or Sabitsuki's white, messy hair and her rugged muscle shirt. Entering the dream world will bring you to a carbon copy of Yume Niki's Nexus, though with only 8 doors instead of 12. LCD DEM overall is a fairly smaller game with less areas, smaller areas, and not as many effects. There's only 13, much less than Yume Niki's 24. Surprisingly enough, the object of the game isn't to collect all of the effects, but rather to find and collect 13 orbs. You'll find each one in an isolated area deep in the dream world, each one having a mural of sorts painted on the wall behind you. They range from planets in the night sky to giant jellyfish. Perhaps they represent Chie's memories or something, I don't know. The effects are all just for show. Of course, you've got the variations of the Yume Niki ones, the shoes that make you run faster, the pajamas that bring it back to the Nexus, and of course, the axe that lets you kill NPCs. The only one you need to finish the game are the shoes, since they let you jump over this one hole here. The dog effect does it too, but why settle for that one when it doesn't increase your speed as well? The game also lacks a lot of the sound effects. Completely absent are the beeps and boops of the menu screen you're so used to, but more notably, there's a complete lack of footsteps. Walking in this game creates no sound whatsoever. It felt kinda off-putting to me, in a way that speaks to me as laziness rather than some sort of deliberate technique to make the player feel unsettled. That said, there really isn't much unsettling about LCD DEM. As far as Niki fan games go, this one is pretty tame. Gone are the chasers, eeriness, and surrealism that Yume Niki and Dot Flow were so memorable for. Though LCD DEM can't quite resist the urge to at least dip its toes in the bazaar, there's a handful of freakish illustrations which seem a bit out of place in this otherwise tranquil game. And not in a good way. Not in a way that catches you off guard, but rather in a way that just seems like it doesn't belong. It'd be like finding a severed head in the middle of Delfino Plaza. It's not weird because it's subtle and unsettling, it's weird because it's something that's blatant and shouldn't be there. The only real example of something horror themed in here is this giant arm riddled with open wounds that unveil eyes peering out of them. It's weird, not because it's weird, but because it's in a game that's afraid to get weird. I find it kind of weird that for the only instance of horror in the entire game, they go for body horror of all things. Miki. 
While typically straying away from the outlandish, LCD DEM instead treats us to the more tranquil side of the Yuminiki spectrum. Scenery is vibrant and beautiful, and the music is wonderfully relaxing. While the lack of footsteps is odd at first, it makes the music stand out that much more, and in turn makes it a lot more soothing. I love the sporadic dripping of the music in the aquarium, and the cymbal crashes in the sewers. It's a soothing escape from reality but it's upsetting to discover what exactly this unfortunate reality is that Chie is trying to escape from. The ending you get after collecting all 12 orbs is a vague yet shocking revelation of just what it is Chie has locked herself away from. It's satisfying in a way to see exactly what it is the character is hiding from for once, but still leaves questions unanswered. Who is this person? Why are they dead? And what does Chie have to do with all of this? And there it just ends. I mean, it wouldn't be a Yume Niki game if it didn't leave things unexplained or open to interpretation. All in all, LCD DEM is a tamer Yumaniki for the faint of heart. If you're not the kind of person who can tolerate the scares or droning eeriness that Yumaniki and Dot Flow offer, there's probably a lot to enjoy here for you. Though fans of the horror side of the Yumaniki spectrum probably won't get much out of it, aside from the unique ending. Here's another one that I've always been interested in. Yume Nishi is another fan game developed by Zenmai Gahara. In this one, you'll control a girl named Usosuki who lives in... You guessed it, a small bedroom she refuses to leave with a desk bed and balcony. The way the Nexus works in this one is pretty interesting. You only have four areas unlocked from the start, but as you explore more and more, more doors will unlock and you'll be able to access areas previously traveled to directly from the Nexus. For a frame of reference, imagine if in Yume Niki, after reaching the White Desert, you'd now have a door in the Nexus that would bring you directly there. This helps streamline the gameplay a lot. Keeping backtracking to previous areas completely minimal. I wish they did this kind of thing in more fan games, but I guess the only reason it works here is because there aren't many areas to begin with. Like LCD DEM, Yume Nishi isn't that big a game. The reasoning this time is that it's vastly unfinished. After publishing version 0.02, the game's creator discovered that an American fan had stolen some of Yume Nishi's assets to use in their own fan game. This really pissed the guy off. Each upcoming version, he'd block access to it with a password, the answer to version 0.04 being riddled with xenophobia. It wasn't long before the dude just straight up stopped working on it. I don't know whether it was out of spite or rage or what, but it's a damn shame because Yume Nishi has a lot of potential. Unlike LCD DEM, Yume Nishi is pretty dang scary. Take Fallis, for example. If you kill this girl here, it'll trigger an event upon entering his room. He'll begin to chase after you, and during your escape, you'll notice that the hallways are now clogged with mourning children garbed in rancid rags. And Fallis gives chase. Unlike most characters in other games, he'll actually follow you outside the room, breaking a long-established rule to catch the player off guard. And don't even get me started on this thing. The Iron Maiden, nicknamed Derek by fans. I don't know where that name came from, but when you walk up to this thing... Uh-uh, I ain't doing that. <laughs> After activating it, so long as you're still in the area, it can fly on screen at any moment and get ya! It flies in out of nowhere at mock speed and kills you. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording the first time it happened like an idiot, and I... I didn't have the balls to walk around until it happened again. I'm not doing that twice, guys. No. <laughs> the school area is riddled with haunted chairs, one of which is zooming around the room sporadically. But once you equip the weapon, it comes to an immediate stop. That is kind of freaking me out. The weapon in this game is freaking brutal. It's a bat with nails hammered into it. For a seemingly harmless girl, Usosuki almost seems like a pretty violent person. Her name, Usosuki, even translates to the word liar, as if her appearance is just that, 
a lie. While it's easy to interpret that the protagonist is some sort of victim in many of these games, it almost seems to me that maybe Usosuki is the predator rather than the prey. This is the only fan game I've played so far that offers multiple ways of killing NPCs. This one here you can burn alive with the match effect rather than simply striking them with a weapon. Another thing that really makes me think this is that the only chasers in the game are activated in response to acting violently. In any case, something's giving pursuit, you're the one who shot first. Also, unlike LCD DEM, it also has a solid share of the surreal. As example, I'll just simply leave you with this image here from one of the backgrounds of the game. Interpret this however you like. Outside of all of this, there really isn't much more to say. The game clones the knife, bike, and lantern effects of Yume Niki in the shape of the nail, bat, rabbit, and match effects. There's a snow bug effect that'll let you access a handful of areas, and the rest are purely cosmetic, including one directly referencing Yume Niki, mimicking Matosuke's hairstyle. You can also obtain a notepad that'll let you save the game from the pause screen, which will load you back into that exact spot when you start the game again. It's real handy, more games should have it. But, as I mentioned before, the developer never finished the game, meaning there's no endings to obtain. You can collect all of the effects, it won't do anything. It's a little unsatisfactory, there's no sense of closure with this one. You'll just have to have fun exploring and call it a day once you found everything. Here's one that's a little bit different. Unlike the other two, Answered Prayers is a Western fan game. You'll take control of Florette, a young girl who takes shelter at a shrine during a rainstorm. I guess this is what you'd consider the bedroom of the game. You can save by interacting with the puddle or sink or whatever it is. Praying at the altar will have Florette's spirit leave her body and enter the spirit world. Well, you know, they call it the spirit world, but it's really a dream world. It seems odd to me for a Game Boy themed area to be in a spirit world. I, I don't know. It makes more sense to me that that would be in a dream. Maybe according to Florette's religion, God really likes Game Boy. I don't know. The Nexus in this game is pretty standard. It's an open area in the woods with only four doors. Unlike Yume Nishi, though, you won't be unlocking more as you explore. Answered Prayers is probably the smallest of the three games. In fact, it only has 12 effects. Or prayers, as they're called in this one. The staples are all here once again. We got the shovel for a weapon, sandals for speed, and glowing eyes to see in the dark. Once again, the rest are merely cosmetic, maybe triggering an NPC or two to act a bit differently. One thing I loved about LCD DEM and Yume Nishi is that you woke up from using the pause screen instead of having to awkwardly hit the 9 key on the keyboard. I didn't like it in Yume Niki, and I don't like it here in Answered Prayers either. Another thing that's pretty weak about this game is the Chaser AI. This game has bloody-faced priestesses chasing after you, but they really don't do a good job. They only walk directly towards you, and they can't seem to figure out how the hell to walk around corners. This is most noticeable in this game's incarnation of the stupid maze staple. Yume Niki had a big maze, so that means every fan game just has to have one. In Answered Prayers, it's especially annoying. The rapidly flashing red strain my eyes, and there's more dead ends than I've ever seen a maze have before. It's bad, and I hate it. There also isn't anything scary in this one. I don't even know if I could call it an RPG Maker horror game. Blood is kept to an absolute minimum. You'll only really see it on the chasers and when you attack NPCs. But what it lacks in horror, it excels in intrigue. There's something mystical about the locales and characters in this game. From the still monster on the sea floor to the elusive appearance of missing no who will crash your game when interacted with. Answered Prayers makes up for its lack of innovation with its pleasing visual design. I love Florette's design, the oversized trench coat sporting an oversized zipper. I love that there's a different character illustration for each and every effect. I love the hooded characters roaming the streets of the Outlands, and I love that one of the effects practically turns you into Kirby. It isn't the most interesting or groundbreaking fan game, but it's cute and fun nonetheless. Unfortunately, like Yume Nishi, it also remains unfinished. The the official website states that it's on an indefinite hiatus. There's no endings to be found in the game either, which has made a bigger kick to the balls when the opening instructions show promise of something occurring once you've rounded up all of the prayers. In doing so, you'll encounter a strange spirit in the Nexus who simply tells you to leave. 
But that's it. I couldn't get a further ending out of this game. It really is unfortunate that LCD DEM is the only one of these three games that didn't fall victim to being unfinished. But even still, it has a very strange relationship with its creator. Karanba posted a bizarre statement on their website telling everyone to stop playing the game and to forget that it ever existed. They told everyone to stop talking about it and to never bring it up ever again. Soon after, the website was deleted along along with all traces of the game. This is why you now have to download it from fan run sites instead of an official one. Nobody knows why this statement was issued. Perhaps the game reminds them of something terrible in their personal life that they'd just like to forget. I think it's unlikely that we'll ever get a solid answer. The state in which many of these games end up in really makes you appreciate the completed effort that is Dot Flow. Not only is that game done, and I mean finished, with multiple endings, a tied up plot, everything you need, but the creator LOL continues to update the game to this very day, adding extra areas, events, and characters. Seeing games abandoned due to lack of motivation, pure spite, or reasons totally unknown, it makes you realize just how much a trooper LOL is. Even the developer of the original Yume Niki, Kikiyama, remains an elusive figure that no one really knows anything about. Hell, that game hasn't even been updated since 2007. And to me, that seems unusual. For someone to leave a game at version 0.10, despite being clearly aware of their massive following, even having merchandise for sale on an official website. But even then, I don't even know how involved Kikiyama is with this official website. Regardless of the fates of these games, they're all solid, and none of them cost a cent. Yume Nishi is my favorite of the three. I'd recommend it to anyone looking for a more scary experience. I'd recommend LCD DEM to anyone looking for something more chill with a decent ending, and answered prayers to anyone looking for something that's just cutesy and fun. But of course, we can't leave it right there. I know there's one more big Yume Nishi related title that you guys want me to talk about. Not so much a spin-off as it's meant to be a successor. The ultimate version of Yume Nikki. A sequel, even. You guys know what I'm talking about. Check in! Check in! Yeah! I think that's good.